So hello and welcome to BioAffairs. So today I will be teaching you about the forms of bacteria, but not the general forms. It is a atypical forms of which are not commonly used or may be seen. So there are two types of form I have already written that is typical form and atypical form. So typical means simply that is the normal form. In which form you can check an organism that is bacteria, normally species or general level, whatever their natural characteristics. But when their characteristic changes due to some treatment or due to environmental pressure, or due to some modifications that time they form they change their structure which are called atypical forms so let's for your renewal of memory just see the normal typical forms those are cocci bacilli tetrad comma cephid spiral cluster chain cephid and etc there are different forms still there are different forms which can be written here like cuneiforms and quadrate forms. So these are species or general level specifications or typical forms which can be seen. So today we will not uh, today we will not be talking about these typical forms. We will be understanding the atypical forms. Okay. So if you need an extra class on these typical forms, let me know in the comment section. So the atypical forms here are involution, leomorphic forms and cellular-less forms. So what do you mean by involution? So involution is the form where the bacterial cell gets swollen or aberrant. Aberrant means it is not in the natural characteristics or the same. Suppose a bacilli, okay, bacillus subtilis. It is a bacilliform bacterium. So somehow they show you a comma separate form or a spirilla due to the same bacteria, bacillus subtilis. Somehow it gets destructured in an aberrant form, which is not its characteristic. That is why it is involution. So when it is swollen and aberrant, that is totally demorphed, you can say, that you can say involution forms. So for each category, we will see the examples and what is the form. It has been seen in case of gonococci. and Yersinia pestis they show this swollen aberrant form not always when if the culture in which they are growing is aging with high salt concentration okay that time these two typical bacteria, normal bacteria, typical forms will show you atypical form that is called involution. Now coming to the second one, pleomorphic you know simply, uh, most of you will say that pleomorphic, okay mycoplasma is a pleomorphic bacteria, we know it is definitely there. See mycoplasma that is an old concept, okay now pleomorphic bacteria of course, you can say mycoplasma to some extent a pleomorphic bacteria, but it is not a typical pleomorphic bacteria. It will come under this cell wall less forms because we know that mycoplasma do not contain a cell wall. So that we will be understanding in this section. But first, let's understand the pleomorphic forms. So remove the mycoplasma example from your brain with pleomorphic forms. Now understand this. Pleomorphic means variation in shape and size. So variation in shape and size, but it will no so, not show you swollen or aberrant forms. So shape and size means some bacteria in some situations due to some environmental conditions present there. That is a bacilli may show you a cocky form. A cocky may show you a bacilli form. Okay. So depending upon the nature or a comma form, so depending upon the environment, they can change their shape. That is called pleomorphic forms. They can change the size. Suppose a bacterial size is 1 to 2 micrometer, 1 
0.1 micrometer suppose but sorry 1 micrometer 1.1 1 micrometer so due to some environmental conditions in which it is growing it became 0.8 micrometer which is not their typical characteristics sometimes it may, may grow larger 1.2 that is the size differentiation and variation of shape i told you it may be a bulky it may be a bacilli which is not in a form so a bacillus bacteria may show you a cocky form or a cocky form can show you a bacilli form or a other form or it can show you some other structure that is called pleomorphic forms and these variations are very rapid and it is changing in nature in frequent time intervals that is very important point so the typical example of this pleomorphic forms are proteus and hemophilus these two bacteria you can say are under pleomorphic forms if it, if there is an example you need to say you can speak these two examples okay in case of involution gonococci and yersinia species these two examples prominent now coming to the most important version of this atypical form or the type that is the third type cellular less forms and end forms so this is i need to go a little bit detail because as i am teaching you end forms i will tell you everything within this so this is discovered by e kleinberger okay during her work with streptobacillus moniliformis she was working with this particular bacteria then it discovered that some bacteria are cellular less okay and that time she gave the name l form so what is l l is for lister what is lister lister is the institution in london so london institute's name has been taken to describe this kinds or the groups of bacteria or the examples of bacteria which are coming under cellular less forms okay so those bacteria okay i write the definition so you can easily see and read with me dig into l form bacteria now speak with me that when bacteria loses cell wall when bacteria so we know a bacteria contains a cell wall cell membrane and within the cell membrane there is a cytoplasm uh, nucleoid and ribosome like some other proteins and carbohydrates are there so when bacteria loses cell wall they become spherical they become spherical or circle shaped irrespective of their original state whether it is a cocky whether it is a bacilli whatever the original state of the bacteria it will become spherical shaped it may occur spontaneously or may be induced by treatment with penicillin or lysozyme so first criteria to be a l form bacteria is it has to be a spherical bacteria means after the treatment or spontaneous modification into a spherical form irrespective of their original either bacilli or cocci or cluster whatever you say and then it may occur spontaneously without any outside interference through any chemical or physical method or it can be done by treatment with penicillin and lysozyme so penicillin we know is a cell wall inhibitor so penicillin cannot penicillin how penicillin works penicillin works through inhibition of cell wall synthesis so when you treat a bacteria or if you are in a growing culture if you add penicillin it will make the young cells devoid of either devoid of cell wall or may be removed a uh, partially removed cell wall will be there if you check under the microscope same happens with lysozyme which degrades the cell wall so either naturally or by treatment if you remove the cell wall if it forms a spherical this is called l form bacteria this is a very important point there is a definition 
Now let's understand a small picture which I have tried to draw for you to make you understand easily. Suppose this is a vasily and normal segment. This is cell wall. This is cell membrane and internal material cell cytoplasm nucleus are there. So I'm not writing that. Now if you treat this with penicillin, two fate can be there after penicillin treatment. One, the cell wall will be partially digested or partially formed and another one where the cell wall is totally digested, there is no cell wall. So in the second case, it will directly form a spherical form and in the first case, it will be showing you some structure integrity but this I have drawn here a bacilli form but actually it will be slowly it will be transforming into this circular form. So let's draw it again. So it will be like this. So it is the slow transformation into this state. This state will be transformed into spherical state. So that is the partial removal. Now Klinberger divided these two parts and named it you know well that is if the partial removal is there it generally happens in case of gram negative bacteria okay in case of gram negative bacteria we can see partial removal of the cell wall but in case of gram positive bacteria there will be total removal of the cell wall cell will be spherical and it is named as protoplast. So in a bacteria, if you remove, if you remove the cell wall, and the cell now contains only cell membrane with the internal materials, it will be called as a protoplast. And here in this case, it will be called as a spheroplast. It's a very important term for your MCQ and other short viva questions. So spheroplast is the partial removal of the cell wall in case of gram negative bacteria mostly and in case of what is protoplast, protoplast is the total removal of the cell wall, the cell membrane with the internal materials will be there. Okay, now as you can see this is also further divided as unstable L form. Why it is unstable L form? Because you are, the bacteria is naturally bacilli, but you are treating it with penicillin. So if you remove the penicillin again and let it grow with normal conditions, normal environment, with normal media, basal media, that time it will again regain its cell wall structure and it will form a bacilli again. That is why it is called an unstable L form. So both the forms are actually are under unstable L form because you are creating an environment where they are losing their cell wall. That is why they are unstable L forms. And the stable L form is shown by which bacteria? That is, whereas naturally stable L forms are mycoplasma. stable L form. That's why I told you forget that the mycoplasma is a pleomorphic bacteria. Let's classify it in under L form bacteria or cell wall deficient bacteria. So mycoplasma is naturally naturally deficient of That is why it is a stable L-form bacteria. It do not need any kind of treatment to remove its cell wall because it do not contain any cell wall. Whereas here, as I told you, it is an unstable L-form. That is spheroplast and protoplast. The bacteria can regrow its cell wall after removal of the compounds. So this is the L-form form bacterial characteristics which are very important for your assay or MCQ or normal questions. Now let me tell you why these cell form bacteria are important because it has been seen 
that these ill-formed bacteria cause chronic inflammations. What are chronic inflammations? Like polynephritis. So this polynephritis is a chronic disease condition mostly created by this L form bacteria. It may be a stable L form, it may be unstable L form, but we don't know what is actually. It needs more research actually. So the micro niche where actually these diseases are forming, L form bacteria are seen. Okay, it may be induced by the environment or some naturally selected L forms are there. That depends on further research it may come okay so i hope this class is very useful in you for your uh, exam as well as viva purpose so if you like my classes give a big thumbs up and comment if you need more detailed and typical forms of bacterial classes if my classes are really helping you in your studies and it is really clearing your concept and if you really like my classes give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel by affairs